The National Walleye Tour Championship is the biggest event in the entire sport. It's pretty incredible that at the end of the year, all four of the guys that we're following have made the championship. In some regards, it's not surprising to see Dewey and John and Max there, but think back to the spring when Max bombed at Spring Valley. That was very much up in the air. And for Owen Wilcox to make the championship as a rookie, stunning. <laughs> the season started with a muddy, cold river event in Spring Valley. We got some strange divine intervention and J.J. DeBernardi took home the dough. Winnebago was a classic springtime walleye tournament where guys found big walleyes in surprisingly shallow water. And this was the one tournament where it was like, whoa, trolling in a couple feet of water? Francis Case is the start of the summertime swing where active walleyes can be caught vertically and there's nobody better at that than Dewey Jelm, our champion. The Sioux was a giant glacial body of water, gin clear water, spooky walleyes that are grouped up in tight pods. And when you find the right pod, that's the guy that's gonna win. And in this event, that was Max Wilson. There's been a lot of big events at Devil's Lake over the years, but never have we had the top 40 together on Devil's Lake with forward-facing sonar. What that looks like, no one knows, but we have four of the best in terms of forward-facing sonar in this event. You have to think guys like Max and Dewey and John, if they're not the favorites, they're among the favorites. Around the lake, uh, the fishing has just been spectacular. Here we go. <laughs> Starting with devils? Starting with devils. Tell me what you know about it. Devil's Lake is the largest natural lake in North Dakota. And from my perspective, the heyday of Devil's Lake was the early 2000s when roadbeds, farms, trees were submerged underwater as the lake continued to grow. And the fishing was unbelievable during this time. I think about like tournaments won by the late Pete Harsh and Mark Quartz had some great events up there. And guys were tying off their boats into the trees using slip cords and jumbo leeches and there'd be days of a hundred fish, and it was a walleye fisherman's heaven. Turns out they like jig wraps a lot on Devil's Lake. I think we went through about, on average, probably like 20 to 30 a day. It's a little average 19 incher for Devil's Lake. Fun fish, good fish to eat, but not what we're looking for. But there's walleyes here. Too close to the tree, don't want to lose any more. I mean, you name it, the structure is literally endless. It's a playground. There's bridges, culverts, roads. It's literally endless. This is more of the tournament caliber here. It's a pike. What do you mean it's a pike? <laughs> yeah, he wanted the jig and wrap. He's a tournament grade. It's a nice one. It's like a 20, this thing has a huge head on it. Like a 25 incher. 7.8. Like this is a kicker fish, honestly. Like if you get if you get one or two of these a day, I'll be super pumped. Oh, I think we've caught ones like that. We just haven't been measuring them. Seriously, like I would have said that was a 24. It's... Head's on a little bit of a swivel right now because I don't want to be seen doing a couple different things. Because a lot of people are still fishing fairly deep, uh, which we are too. There's definitely a lot of fish out deep, but there's also some really nice ones in shallow. A lot of this game is not, you know, playing defense a little bit too, and not, not showing all your cards until tournament morning. So we're uh, definitely eliminated in a lot of water. Jeez. 
Oh, he hit it again. Some of these fish are like super weird. Like they'll either hit it like completely right away on the first fall, won't even hit the bottom, or you gotta sit there and work on them for a little bit. Honestly, like sometimes it feels like whatever you, I've caught them on some baits that I've never caught a fish on in my entire life. So it seems like if you just get around them, bite on almost anything. John's feeling pretty confident and I still want to beat him. Definitely going to bring it in this tournament. So he's, he's definitely feeling it. I was talking about golfing like three days ago, not pre-fishing anymore, so. When Dewey approaches the championship, he's no longer the hunted. He didn't have a great tournament at the Sioux. It wasn't a complete bomb, but now he's officially hunting his buddy John. White bass. So Dewey is from the position like where it. I have a pressure on me, but it's a different kind of pressure. He's hooked up. You got one too? Right. We're hooked up. Exact simultaneous. <laughs> Active target does not lie. Yeah, five feet and then have my rod tip so high, but I always see my bait so I can just go like this. All right, we're on Devil's Lake. Pretty much used to be in my top two for favorite walleye destinations. Now it's probably back to number one. And after what I've learned this week with forward facing sonar and uh, really just realized how many big walleyes are in this lake. And it's kind of endless the structure they use. They're in eight feet of water in weeds. They're in 16 feet of water in the trees. They're on shallow rocks. They're on deep rocks. They're literally everywhere. That's how it's supposed to happen every time. Throw the cast and you can basically just start reeling it in. Really most of practice has been just trying to find new areas. We understand that five pounders are really kind of the tournament grade fish right now, four to five pounders. And uh, the plan is get a solid like 20 pound bag and then save room for a couple of the 26, 27, 28 inchers that we've been catching all week. It's been crazy fishing. Not even a hint of fall yet, but um, having lots of fun and hopefully you're gonna confirm a couple key spots in the next few hours. We got a fish, a nice walleye. And we got a walleye. You guys impressed at home yet? Home, oh, our beloved fans of Tour Level Gold, who we all love for your support. So that was for you guys. It wasn't for me. I knew exactly what I was when I cast it to it. That's a little bit nicer one. It's three pounds. Now we're looking for in the tournament, but definitely knew how to eat a glide bait. I was impressed. John's love for Devil's Lake goes back many, many, many years. I think John actually became a fan of Devil's Lake watching guys like Pete Harsh do so well in the early 2000s. Back when John was in college at North Dakota State, he'd kind of make an annual trip here and it all kind of came full circle in 2019 when John won the NWT championship. John Hoyer, National Walleye Tour champion. That sound of fishing right there. John's career sort of was at a pivotal moment in 2019. Fish. He was yes. kind of torn between, keeper, I'm a carpenter one. and a part-time fisherman, or am I going to become a full-time fisherman? Well, if we look back in the history books, 2019 was one for the records, and it ended with an amazing championship win on Devil's Lake. This place will forever be special to John. Uh, still a lot of big ones in the secret zone that I don't think anyone knows about. I've seen a fish around here, but not so much like here and here, but not so much right here. Uh, okay, this spot's freaking ridiculous. We're now heading back to the same location that John won in 2019. He's leading angler of the year. John never needs a boost of confidence, 
but at this point, his confidence is at an all-time high. And this is one of his favorite bodies of water, and he now gets to pick it apart with his active target. Oh, it's not even fair right here. Hmm? Are we rolling? How are you really? Um, um yeah, fine. It's day by day. Some days, you know, you're locked in. Other days, you're not. Um, and that's the thing I, I just need to focus on, on fishing. It's been a whirlwind few weeks for Max coming off of his win at Sault Ste. Marie. He's kind of been like the talk of the fishing world for better or for worse. He has to find a way to put all that aside and still make sure he's in the right frame of mind for the biggest event in walleye fishing. Yeah. yeah, and if you know Max, the emotional side of things can get the best of him. That's a big one. Oh my goodness, it's a giant. Nice. Uh, rail though, look at that thing. Thing's ready to die. They're in here, huh? Yeah. Those things wanted it. Max has had a successful pre-fish where he's on a strong, a deep water reaction bite. That's gonna be a stud. No surprise, Max is crushing them on glide baits. There are a lot of highs and lows, lots of lows, lots of highs. Um, but, you know, that's what, that's what this project's all about. That's what fishing's all about. You know, it's the highs and lows. Um, the lows are low, the highs are high. And this is an uncanny situation. It always seems to happen with the biggest events in fishing. Here comes a giant cold front to throw one more curveball before the tournament begins. And of course, this has a lot of fishermen worried. Thinking back to Spring Valley when Owen had a tough opening tournament, and then he had mechanical problems at Winnebago. Owen's come a long way. He's earned the respect of his peers. He's learned to work behind the media. In all aspects, He's become a true professional. Owen has almost developed the same stoic, even-keeled personality that Dewey has, where he just loves to fish. Everything else that his job entails is kind of a second thought. I just can't wait to wake up the next morning and go destroy some walleyes. How do you think this cold front's going to affect the bite? Like, are you worried about the cold front? Um, there's a part of me that's a little worried but I'm not too worried uh, it's getting closer to fall so uh, my my big hope is they uh, they go off and I can get them on the on the digging wrap that's that's my that's what I really hope but if they don't I'm totally fine with it I'll just find another way to catch them it's championship like I said I'm going zero or hero if I don't do well oh well As Owen evolves, it's pretty clear that nothing gets him too high or too low. He's sort of leveled that roller coaster season where his mentality is just, how do I find the next bite? How do I maximize this? And it doesn't matter what else is going on, he's always excited, he's always ready to fish in the morning. back on some old waypoints and right away we just started through here. Uh -huh. Dusty, you want to go cover my boat for me? I'll help you. No thanks. Can we bring that other Labrador up here now? Uh, dog fight? He's been giving me the look. Well, so we had this huge thunderstorm that came through last night. It was, it was pretty cool to watch. Kind of just like whatever we had found in practice is gonna completely change anyways. We know what we know what to do. We know what areas to kind of be in. Uh, it's Devil's Lake, so they're always biting somewhere. And to go out there today, the like, what are what are you gonna learn? Like the conditions are completely different than what they have been. Um, you're just gonna basically have to fish this one kind of on the fly, which um, I'm completely okay with, and I think it's it's gonna be a fun challenge. Hey, 
When you observe camp, what's impressive is the commitment between all three of them to find the hero bite. And when I say hero bite, I don't just mean let's swing for the fences. The, the hero bite here is we're gonna remain dedicated to finding something that nobody else has found or nobody else is willing to find. Last year at the championship on Lake Erie, that was shallow water weeds and casting for John. This year, the hero bite is still maybe yet to be determined. Watching a kid eat a brownie like a goofball. The book on Devil's Lake this time of year is deep. The vast majority of fishermen are going to be looking to find schooled up walleyes in basins on structure in, I don't know, 25, 35, maybe even 40 feet of water. That's where most of the fish are holding. Wouldn't be surprised to see somebody experiment with some shallow water situations, but this is going to be mainly a vertical type of tournament where guys are getting over the top of the fish and enticing them with some sort of reaction type glide bait. Not let it be my, my arch nemesis because I fished three tournaments out here, done well in one, and that the two I just got railroaded in. So I um, just want to go have a good tournament and have a good end to the season. While it sounds doable, no one has ever won the year-end championship and simultaneously won Angler of the Year. It's always been an either-or proposition. It's set at 60. That's 60 and a half yards. Pretty big guess, right? We're shooting the bow. Don't walk out the south side of the house, please. That's my excuse, but that's 60 yards, you know. I'm not happy with it. It's not good enough. 